Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Mike Garuccio. I'm a principal technologist at Expedient, uh, and I'm presenting today on uh, our solution for implementing multi-cloud observability uh, using the Elastic Stack. So to get started, a little bit about Expedient. Uh, we're a VMware-based cloud provider, uh, so we have uh, data centers in about uh, seven different cities right now. Uh, and continuously growing. And one of our services that we provide to clients is uh, monitoring. Uh, and that's in addition to monitoring our own infrastructure, uh, we're monitoring their VMs and uh, other workloads. And uh, we really have a rapidly changing set of requirements there as we take on bigger and more advanced customers, uh, which has been great for us uh, in terms of growth as a business, but has created uh, a problem or really a couple of problems. Uh, number one issue has been uh, our alert growth. So we've seen uh, an average of about, about 2,000 alerts a day recently, uh, and that's growing you know, at about 20% year over year. So that's continuously uh, scaling up. And our monitoring team really can't just continue to grow linearly to deal with that alert growth, because um, there's a fair amount of manual work involved anytime one of those comes in, and uh, it just doesn't scale. In addition to that, we've had some unhappy customers uh, who really demanded better visibility and better tools for identifying new problems. So our existing monitoring was great for things that we knew could break, uh, you know, server running out of memory, server running out of disk, but not great at identifying the next issue or really helping to troubleshoot problems when they came up and aren't obvious. Uh, and the final uh, issue was that we have a major push around uh, sort of supporting a multi-cloud operating model for our customers. And that really wasn't going to work with our traditional solutions because we had to have some a bunch of complex networking configurations, uh, different agents and tools that we all needed installed uh, on every server we were going to monitor. And it just didn't work for things that were moving outside of uh, our cloud. So we really started breaking down the requirements of what we needed that's new and different. And we decided that these were the most important pieces. Number one, it had to be flexible. It had to be something where we can easily expand the functionality anytime that we wanted to. Uh, so adding new workloads, new features, that sort of thing. It had to support those remote workloads for that multi-cloud operating model. And it had to be something where we could be collaborative with our clients. So that's not something where we're just uh, applying a configuration and it's a blanket the same across everybody. We need to be able to collaborate and really let them customize the experience to what they needed uh, and monitor what's important to them. At the same time, it needed to be something that we can easily install agents, manage centrally, uh, and have pretty good support for automating deployments uh, so that we could uh, meet those scale requirements that we had without bogging ourselves down with a bunch of manual config. And finally, uh, like any other multi-tenant provider, uh, we needed something that's secure. So uh, two-factor authentication was a uh, 100% requirement. It had to have hard multi-tenancies. Um, if anyone's not familiar with that, basically, we needed to have every single tenant be uh, fully isolated from all of the other tenants and not able to impact them either uh, from a noisy neighbor standpoint uh, or particularly get any access to their data. And finally, data had to be encrypted in transit since things are now moving across the internet and not staying within our four walls anymore. So the solution to a lot of those problems ended up being Elastic's new observability stack. And the biggest thing here for us was the number of integration options that we had uh, to really deliver on that flexibility. So ideally, we like to use Elastic Agent integrations uh, since they're extremely easy to use um, and enable. They have a nice graphical configuration, makes it really easy for us to do that collaborative work with our clients since they have an interface that they can understand and really extend out what's being used. Uh, on the downside, though, it is somewhat limited in the number of integrations that it has today. Elastic team is definitely working on expanding that out rapidly. Um, every version of Elastic we've seen has improved that situation, but there are still things that aren't included. So from there, we can go to the Beats modules, which adds some complexity. You need to deal with YAML files. It's all text-based, but you get that broader selection of integrations to work with. And then what was really important for us is that if there's some random one-off item that we end up pulling in uh, that doesn't have a module created already, we needed to be able to have some way of dealing with it, even if it requires some extra effort on our, on our part. So that's where we use log stash, ingest pipelines. Um, it's more complex, but we can do things like grok patterns and scripting to do data processing and uh, extract the value that we need from, you know, kind of generic log data. And 
compatibility there is effectively unlimited because we can customize those tools to ingest really any arbitrary data that we need to. In addition to that, we get this really nice performance and availability charts uh, sort of out of the box from Elastic Observability Solution. Uh, so this lets us present that data and that visibility that our clients were demanding without having to do a whole lot of extra effort on our part. So we get these really great charts that go into all the things that a tip client typically cares about on a VM, uh, and then also have this great availability graph so that uh, they can be confident in their availability and we can, in fact, show back that they uh, have had the uptime that we promise. Those pieces were great, but there are a couple things that are missing, uh, and basically what we needed to go out and build in order to make turn this into a full solution. Uh, first thing was automated deployment tools, uh, and then workflow automation to respond to alerts as they come in, and really needed to come up with what that collaboration process looks like uh, when we're working with customers. So the first piece we really created was an Elastic Ansible collection. Uh, and this is a collection that's designed to uh, support Elastic Cloud Enterprise, Elastic, and Kibana for us. Uh, so it's a set of modules that let us do things like deploy clusters, configure alerts uh, in Kibana, uh, add users in Elastic, that sort of thing. Uh, and this really provided the foundation for being able to deploy everything else that we're working on. And this is a collection that's available on both GitHub and Ansible Galaxy. Uh, so you can go download it and use it in your own environment if you think there would be value there. So building on that, we went ahead and developed some automated cluster configuration tools. Uh, so this effectively takes those modules and turns them into playbooks that we can use anytime we're deploying a new customer. So this uh, creates a, a new instance inside of our Elastic Cloud Enterprise environment and also configures a default set of alerts, uh, users, that, that sort of thing. So you see on the right here, a uh, alert playbook that we created. So it really lets you go ahead and specify uh, all the typical conditions that you would have in the UI, uh, but automate that so it can go ahead and uh, be used in an automated manner. Uh, most interesting part here for us is that uh, we can configure the actions and send arbitrary uh, webhook data off into uh, some middleware that we created that then can get uh, ingested into our ticketing system. And uh, we'll talk a little bit more about that later. And finally, we also automated agent installations. Uh, so this is relatively simple, uh, but these are Ansible playbooks that go ahead and pull down a, a new copy of the Elastic agent uh, from Elastic's website, uh, unzips it, and installs it using the uh, enrollment token that we get out of the platform. Uh, and this is uh, executed via a cloud management platform that we have. So at the same time as we're uh, building this new uh, monitoring solution, we're also building a new management solution and those can kind of integrate together. Uh, so anytime a user deploys a new VM, it automatically gets uh, the Elastic Agent installed because we're running these playbooks against it. And uh, again, this is available on GitHub if anyone would like to download them. Uh, basically the entire playbooks are uh, over to the right of the screen at the moment, so nothing too complex, but potentially useful for you. In addition to those, we also do automated heartbeat config. So this is effectively, we have our uh, heartbeat servers that are deployed inside of client environments. And uh, when the server gets deployed, our cloud management platform also triggers this uh, playbook that goes ahead and adds an additional config file to the, uh, or to those heartbeat servers and restarts the service. So effectively what this is doing is just making it so that we can have ping monitoring as soon as a VM is started up without having to do any sort of manual configuration. Uh, and we also have a playbook created that creates new heartbeat servers. Uh, so those can be deployed and you can have multiple monitoring points. So deployments are great, uh, but it really doesn't do anything for day two operations. And that's where we really need to come up with a system for automating alert management and response to help deal with those, you know, 2000 alerts a day and take that load off of our monitoring team. So this is our alerting architecture. Uh, basically we have things or all of our alerts and log data and metrics are coming into Elastic from enterprise networks, uh, regular, you know, residential networks. So people's laptops and desktops and generic cloud environments. Uh, those are all getting ingested into Elastic, and then depending on if it's something that we care about uh, or if it's something that a, just a customer has configured, it'll either alert out to you know some external system for them, whether that be Jira, Teams, email, PagerDuty, uh, or it'll generate a webhook that then feeds into our alert middleware, 
which provides some uh, alert triage, escalations, uh, and automated remediations, uh, which is really kind of where the magic is here for us. So kind of zooming into that workflow, uh, this is the process that happens every time we have a ticket that gets generated. So first, uh, ticket comes into Elastic, or alert comes into Elastic, it, and fires into our middleware. It first checks to see if alerts are currently being ignored for that asset. So we have a system where uh, if maintenance is happening, something like that, we can just go ahead and ignore alerts because they're expected uh, and there aren't something that we want to process. Uh, assuming that they aren't, we then check for existing tickets for that asset and problem type just to see if it's sort of a re-alert for something that we're already actively working on. Uh, if it is, it just makes a note into that ticket and uh, closes the workflow. If not, it goes ahead and generates a ticket with the relevant information uh, that then goes ahead and notifies the client that you know something's going on and we're addressing it. Uh, at that point, it's going to attempt some automated fixes if they're available. Uh, so those are uh, executed via that cloud management platform. Uh, so effectively more Ansible playbooks that do things like clear temp files, uh, pull down information that can then get added to the ticket, that sort of thing. Uh, if the condition is then fixed, and goes, goes ahead and automatically closes the ticket. If not, it escalates it up to our monitoring team for follow-up. Uh, so this can deal with a pretty large volume of our basic tickets that we are in basic alerts that we typically would have to have had a person triage and do a bunch of work for. Uh, and this way people are only in the loop when it's actually a unique problem that needs to be solved uh, as opposed to just sitting there all day and basically creating tickets. Going forward, we have a couple of new things that we are gonna make uh, make sure that we're adding. Uh, the first one is new response workflows to auto remediate more problems. Right now we're pretty focused on just kind of basic things, like I said, clearing temp files, uh, running top and attaching things to the ticket, that kind of thing. Uh, and we really do want to get more advanced there uh, with the end goal that anything that we have a document for right now, where, you know, if alert X comes in, do Y is codified and automated for us. Uh, so we're only really dealing with things that are unique. We also are gonna be working more on allowing customers to customize those auto responses. So if there are specific things that they know need to happen on their environment when uh, certain alerts come in, we'd like the ability to go ahead and let them give us the playbooks to run and then just automatically execute those. Uh, and then finally, it's we're really looking to expand out what we can do in terms of monitoring customer applications. Uh, because at the moment, we're really focused just on the infrastructure layer, and we do want to give them the ability to pull in data from, you know, their Java applications, IIS, SQL, uh, whatever else that they care about, uh, and even if, enable the automated responses there as well. And uh, that's everything for me today. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, joining me.